So Wales round off a disappointing Six Nations with their most disappointing performance. And though the scoreline says there was only a few points in it, Wales were never in this game. Let's dig into what happened. My name's Christian and this is the Welsh Sports Podcast. So, what do you say about that performance? Other than it was an embarrassment, what else do you say? I think Italy played really well. They, especially in defence, they put a lot of pressure on us. And in attack, they were managing to create some opportunities and causing issues out wide, especially. Uh, but Wales just just weren't at the races. I can't count how many knock-ons there were. It was it was like a team of complete strangers being forced together to play at the highest level of Test match rugby. I thought reverting back to the original sort of main squad you'd been going with, I thought might be the right way to go. But they just looked like they didn't know each other. They looked like they were all bickering. There was no communication. The the, pa- the amount of passes that got knocked on. How can professional players who do nothing but play rugby all day drop the ball as, as, as many times as that? Like, yeah, you're entitled to make a mistake every now and, now and then. But to make so many mistakes and just keep compounding them, any time we had an entry into the 22 or a promising attack, it would eventually end in some inaccuracy of a knock-on or not securing the ball at the rucks or giving away a penalty for coming in at the side. It was just embarrassing. And you have to be honest, you're looking at Italy on the pitch. Their players, they're all calm. They know exactly what they're doing. They've got the direction. At no point were they looking stressed, even when we came back towards the end of the game and we had a bit of momentum. They never looked like they were panicking or anything like that. They just looked like, we know we're going to win this game because we just weren't at the races. Gareth Thomas had about seven or eight one-man truck-ups and got smashed every time. Tompkins couldn't catch a cold and then he was getting smashed. Nobody did anything. I think the last two games, Rio Dyer has really been exposed out wide. He's been tremendous in attack, so I don't want to criticise too much, but out wide, he's been exposed too many times. Josh Adams just looks like a fish out of water at the moment. And it's just through the the whole team. There wasn't really anyone who did anything of any note. Dav Jenkins tackled himself and just worked himself into the ground as he's done all, all uh, tournament. But other than that, you look across the whole team and no one really did anything you got to feel so sorry for George North. He looked like the only senior player on that pitch, and I can totally understand why he was ready to call it this his career. I'm so gutted that he went off and got injured, and I'm so gutted that we give him that performance to send him off. What a servant he's been. It was just... I don't know. Like We have to give Italy credit, but Italy weren't the main reason we lost that game. We were the main reason we lost that game. We showed as as the game moved on and we actually got really desperate and started throwing things uh, together that we could cause them trouble. It wasn't that that we couldn't beat them or anything. We scored tries and uh, we could handle everything they were throwing at us. But we just didn't get a foothold in the game for any amount of time. If we look at the forwards the lineup was good again and you must you 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 must say it's been really good all uh six nations mainly down to Elliot D's throwing in and the scrum was an issue again Dylan Lewis w- was brought in to do a job which he didn't do unfortunately um that's really concerning because I don't see anyone else that they can really bring in other than what they've already got on the squad to make that better so that's slightly uh, concerning. Uh, Gareth Thomas is great around the park, but his uh, vulnerabilities at scrum time have shown up the last last few games especially. The back row worked tirelessly. Tommy Raphael was into everything, as always. Alex Mann was tackling and carrying as much as he could. Um, I thought this wasn't Wainwright's best game. I think it was probably his worst game of the tournament, but you could say that for pretty much all of the players. If we look at the backs, Thomas Williams was probably the only bright spark in the back line. I've been quite a big supporter and defender of Sam Costello throughout this tournament. And I said, we've got to stick with him. But that performance today was just, you cannot miss three penalty kicks for touch. That is absolutely criminal. 
that was the worst game I've ever seen him play. I know he's a young guy in his, his short career. Uh, he's had a short career so far, and he'll learn from these things. But that is inexcusable. You you can forgive someone for missing touch once, or maybe more than once, if it's blowing a gale and you can't have any control of the ball once it goes in the air. But we're in a stadium with the roof closed, and there was no mitigating circumstances for him to repeatedly miss touch three times is absolutely insane. We could just never get a foothold in the game, and that was a big part of the reason. I was quite critical of Tompkins' selection. I think they should have got given Watkins another opportunity. I thought he made Costello look a bit better without having that erraticness of Tompkins outside him, I, and he gave him more of an outlet. And I don't know why he didn't bring... Watkins back in he said in the week that the reason he there was some work on his line speed wasn't good enough or something I mean your line speed might not be as uh, fast as Nick Tompkins but he doesn't make his tackles half the time he was absolutely terrible and I hope we don't see him in a Welsh jersey again I thought I was never a fan of him prior to the World Cup and I thought he was excellent in the World Cup and he started changing my opinion of him but he's just reverted straight back to what he used to do all of the bad stuff he used to do he's gone back to that and I think we need to get rid of him we've got getting rid of all the old dead wood and bring it just if we're going to put in some youngsters just put him in and do it all in one go because um it, he is just not good enough for me poor George North I mean I'm, I'm just absolutely devastated that could not have gone any worse for him going off like that in that game to, with an injury don't know what is going to you know what the extent of that is going to be now it's just such a shame i'm absolutely gutted for him like we have to give him his props i wrote uh saw a couple of stats um and it's just a testament we had a an interesting poll on the channel where i asked to be uh, where would you rate george north a lot of people put him in one of the best ever and a lot of people put him in a modern day great which is where i put him in but when you look at his stats, you can't deny that he's one of the best ever. Third highest caps of all time. Second highest tries of all time with 47. That's amazing. The youngest try scorer for Wales, the youngest try scorer in a World Cup, and the youngest player to 50 caps, and the first Welsh player to play in four World Cup quarterfinals. I mean, what a player, what a servant he's been. And... Um, like I said, I'm just gutted that it ended like that for him because he doesn't deserve that. And he was trying to um, take control a bit and put a bit of calm into the team. He put a nice kick through when everything was a bit frantic. Um, he was trying to carry, but he just didn't get the ball in any sort of space. And, and uh, inevitably, he ended up getting injured. So I really hope that it's not a serious injury and he can have a good end to his career in France because if anyone deserves it it's George and also thank you George. Looking at the wingers uh, Rio Dyer has looked very very dangerous every time he's touched the ball um, and he's one of the few players that looks like that and he always looks like he's going to break a tackle but defensively he was really poor today he got caught out a couple of times same as he did last week against France his tackling was quite poor this week which is generally okay um, so I'm bit disappointed in in him he's just sort of regressed in the last game maybe definitely defensively maybe not an attack um but josh adams is just a shell of the player that he was oh i don't know whether he'll ever get that back he's just the effort's there but there's just something's not working with his brain and his body and not doing the same thing or whether he can't make his brain can't make his body do what he used to but He's trying, but he, was like, he gave away penalties. Um, that cover tackle, he tried to come across for, I think it was Italy's third try, and he got completely stepped. And, and he just kept running. He, he might as well have carried on running down the tunnel because he, he didn't even attempt to grab the player. He was, he was just completely left, uh, gone flying. So I think he needs to go back to Cardiff and probably have a bit of time off and get himself fully fit and um, then try and work out 
how to get him back to where he, uh, his, his standards are because at the moment they're nowhere near what he would usually set for himself. And um, I don't know whether it's just time caught up with him and he'll he's never going to get back his form. But um, yeah, it's just it's sad to see a senior player like him who was so good at one time and now he's just completely, he just looks lost out there and, it, and it's really uh, weird and a shame to see. But we and maybe it's time to just move him on and bring someone else in. Um, Cameron Winnett was pretty good in a poor team. He was assured under the high ball as ever and tackling he was good. Uh, put Dyer in a bit of space down the wing, or I think it was Dyer, uh, with a good pass. He cut out the, the defence, fixed the defence and put Dyer into some space. But other than that, he didn't really get the ball. They've used him a couple of times out wide, hitting him short and he's like, 5'10", something like that, and he's not very big, so I don't know why they're trying to do that. Um, but he's had a really good Six Nations. I'll do like a whole Six Nations review next week of all the games, so uh, like a debrief, so I won't go too deep into that at the moment. But the bench, which I was actually really worried about going into the game, did make somewhat of an impact. L luckily, the front row didn't really have to have many scrums which was a benefit because they're more mobile type players i thought um in fairness evan lloyd looked pretty decent uh only had a couple of line outs but nailed them and he looked busy around the field so uh he'll probably feel a lot better about his week's work this week than last week um but he just needs to play now he's got to go back to cardiff and they need to give him opportunities to play because he's third choice hooker and he's playing for Wales. It's just like, what's going on? I don't know. But I thought he did all right. Um, and the other two props were, were pretty good in the loose and they made quite an impact with the energy coming off the bench. So I was worried about that. Um, luckily, like I said, we didn't have to scrummage too much. So I think that saved them. Um, but yeah, they did okay. Uh, Roland's sort of stirred thing, sturdy things up when he came on as well. Adam Beard was like confused when he got pulled off, as if like, what, why, why are you taking me off? So I just can't stand Adam Beard. I think he's one of those players who just always wants to talk and tell other people what to do. And I think it's because he's not confident in his own ability. Either he's not confident in his own ability and he projects, or he thinks he's better than everyone and he either or is not good enough for Wales. I, I think he just comes across as like, I don't know, I don't know. It's something about him that I just don't like and everything I've seen from like all the behind the scenes stuff they show, it's just him constantly talking white noise and the the squad players must be just like, shut up mate, like just let the, someone else say something, you know what I mean? Mackenzie Martin will be disappointed uh, with coming on he didn't really have an awful impact on it, the game as such, but he had that really bad knock on when we actually had scored and I think it was Elliot D's try and then we got a bit of momentum and we were playing and getting penalties and creeping up the pitch and um, then he just took that knock on then from the line out, just again inaccuracy, whether it come off the top awkward for him or whatever, but he's got to catch those. Um, that and then that killed all the momentum. Once that happened, we were never gonna wrestle the game back. Uh, at that point, the the win was still maybe within reach, but um, yeah, he'll be disappointed. But again, he's a young player and he just needs to play now, um, and he needs just week in week out games now. Um, Kieran Hardy come on and sped things up. Uh, although Thomas Williams was brilliant again, I think one of the few. Uh, I was thought Hardy did well coming off the bench, and and the game had op had opened up a little bit by then, um, and he definitely helped the speed of ball and stuff like that, which was good. Um, Ewan Lloyd was wasn't too bad when he came on, better than he has been in the previous couple of games, and anything was really better than what Costello was displaying today. So. Um, he, but again, he needs to just play. He needs if he's gonna be playing outside half for Wales, then he needs to be playing it at at club level. And he's not going to be if Costello's there. And if 
if he is playing it, then where's Costello? He's going to be on the bench. It's just like, it's a shame that he decided to go to that region and not like somewhere else, like the Dragons or whatever, or even Cardiff, where he would pay, play a lot more. But that is what it is. Um, and Mason Grady impressed me. He came on, dropped the ball straight away, and cat like it was just carrying on from the comedy of errors from the rest of the team. But I think um, he showed that he why why he people were calling for his selection. He uh, really had the bit between his teeth, and he wanted to make an impression, and he really did in attack. He just showed that last try, even though it was obviously a lucky bounce. He just showed why. Uh, there's a lot of hype around him and about his athletic prowess, but he was the only one who really got us some go forward. So I wonder if that was enough to get him in the teams uh, more regularly now. I don't know. Uh, again, he's just another one he needs to play, but he's been playing on the wing. Wales seem to have used him more in the centre, or Gatlin seems to see him more as a, as a centre maybe. So I don't really know um, Yeah, what's going to Go, go on there but yeah all in all it was just a very very disappointing game um, I, it was a disappointing Six Nations in the fact that we won the first wooden spoon in like over 20 years so uh, that's not obviously desirable there's some things you can take away and we have learnt about some players and there's some young players who've proved that they probably can hang in, the, in at international rugby. Some have also proved that they're not ready yet. Interestingly, Gatlin said in his press conference that at, when Abby Turney came in to the change room, he sort of said, if you want me to resign, I will, which I thought was a very weird thing to, to say. Um, she obviously said no. And I don't think, I think he's going to come under a lot of criticism and maybe some of his squad selection should. But as I've been had a couple of conversations in the comments with some of you guys. I think he's the best man for the job for now. And we might as well stick with him because I don't know who else they could get in at the moment. Um, yeah, it's just a bit, it's just, just not been a great Six Nations, but there is some green shoots. So I will go into those in my review. But for now, uh, sorry, this one was a bit late. I was out with watching Super Saturday yesterday in the pub. So, uh, just thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.